Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition's top stories. St. Lucia's chief medical officer cautions against relaxed attitudes towards the COVID-19 protocols as global cases rise again. The Plainview Combined School opens its smart classroom under the ICT in Education program. And the winners of the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports logo competition. St. Lucia's chief medical officer has cautioned against relaxed attitudes towards the COVID-19 protocols as the nation registers decreases in new cases of the coronavirus. The caution comes as several countries around the world are experiencing increasing COVID cases. On a global level, the new cases of COVID-19 have increased for the eighth consecutive week, with more than 5.2 million new cases reported in the last week. An 8% increase in deaths was also noted last week. The countries reporting the highest number of new cases include India, United States of America, Brazil, Turkey and France. On a regional level, Martinique registered 871 new cases in the last week with three different variants circulating. Dr. Sharon Belmar George says this resurgence in the last four months is driven by the emergence of the SARS CoV 2 variants of concern and inconsistent use of public health and social measures. While the Ministry of Health continues the COVID 19 vaccination process on a daily basis across the island, the CMO is urging the public to continue practicing prevention measures. The Ministry of Health, we thank the public for their cooperation in adhering to the measures to reduce COVID-19 transmission as we manage our third wave. The Ministry of Health, we continue to monitor the global and regional situation and to strengthen protocols to ensure evidence-based measures are used to guide the recommendations and the protocols as we continue to live safely in a COVID-19 environment. The Ministry of Health, we alert the public that we are still at high risk to community outbreak due to the following. The high risk of international tourism markets, the illegal entry of persons from countries of high risk who are roaming in communities, the non-adherence of citizens to home quarantine, the non-adherence of visitors to hotel protocols, the reduced use and poor use of the face masks in public places, the increased mass crowd events noted across the island, the non-adherence to established protocols at business places, the crowding of public buses without mask use. Dr. Belmar George is calling on all St. Lucians to help maintain the gains thus far to ensure the continued safe reopening of the country. Meantime, the director of the Pan American Health Organization, Dr. Carissa Etienne, is concerned that the Americas is experiencing a setback with the pandemic. Dr. Etienne says the tragic milestone of more than 3 million deaths from COVID, nearly half of them in the Americas, is a reminder that we must do more to protect each other because this virus continues to be a threat in every corner and community across our region. In the last week alone, the Americas reported more than 1.5 million new COVID cases and nearly 40,000 deaths. Cases in Canada are still growing, particularly among young people in their 20s and 30s. And in the United States, infections are on the rise after weeks of declines. Nearly every country in Central America is reporting a rise in infections. Cuba, Puerto Rico, and the Dominican Republic continue to drive most infections in the Caribbean. And many smaller island nations like Aruba, Bermuda, and Curacao are reporting a rise in COVID-related deaths. The recent volcanic eruptions in St. Vincent and the Grenadines have led to evacuations with thousands of people currently living in shelters. More than 137 COVID cases have been reported in shelters thus far, and, and we expect more new infections in the coming weeks. In South America, cases are accelerating in Colombia, Venezuela, Bolivia, and Uruguay. Argentina has also seen a rapid growth of new infections and has assumed the third highest case count in our region. 
The PAHO director says it is imperative that individuals take the COVID vaccines to bring cases under control. Dr. Etienne, however, notes the challenge with anti-vaccination messages. Misinformation, she says, is one of the most serious threats to public health and it is most damaging when it fuels vaccine hesitancy. Because unreliable information spreads quickly, PAHO is collaborating with tech companies like Twitter, Google and Facebook to address fake news and to ensure that the public can easily find accurate information. But we all have a role to play in stopping these rumors from spreading online or in conversations. When we read or hear something that seems outlandish or impossible, it probably is. Before sharing something, we owe it to each other to check the source and confirm that the information is true. This is only common courtesy. And if you have a doubt, please don't spread it. Director of the Pan American Health Organization, Dr. Carissa Etienne. The Embassy of Taiwan this week presented equipment to the Plainview Combined School to facilitate the opening of a smart classroom. The initiative forms part of the ICT in Education program supported by the government of Taiwan. More in this report. Permanent Secretary in the Department of Education, Innovation and Gender Relations, Michelle Charles, noted that the Department of Education remains committed to providing students with real-world skills, enabling them to become self-sufficient. The opening of the classroom, she explained, sets the foundation for the development of technological competencies required to succeed in the global environment. To the students of the Plainview, Plainview Combined School, Today's gift is an investment in them. You are the future and we wish to ensure that you possess the requisite skills necessary to navigate this very dynamic digital space. We believe in the ability of your teachers to integrate the use of technology into your everyday instruction. And we trust that you will be receptive and excited to learn through varying approaches. The equipment provided includes Chromebook laptops, projectors, and an educational interactive television. This will aid in ensuring that students have access to IT equipment and are ready for the online learning environment. Taiwanese Ambassador, His Excellency Peter Chen. The reopening of school does not underscore the imperativeness of incorporating ICT into the education system for the future. Yeah, at the time that uh, we hear about coding, robotics, drones, e-business, artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, big data, open uh, courses on a daily basis. Today's event makes sure that we are smart and strategically in, in providing the resources that are necessary in teaching and learning in the future. Principal of the Plainview Combined School, Ella Thomas-John, says the classroom and the equipment received will be put to good use. Presently, distributed learning is the desired approach for teaching. Therefore, our attention should focus on how well we can use the ICTs and how best to develop, utilize, and leverage students' brain power. Through its use, we promise that as the phenomenal school that we have proven and continue to be, and as our motto enunciates, we will pray for knowledge, pray for wisdom, and determine to sail through our future conquest in this smart classroom. We also thank you for the additional component of teacher training, acknowledging that planning to teach virtual is different from planning to teach in a physical classroom. Teacher Teacher training is paramount. The Plainview Combined School is the only Southern primary school included in the Smart Classroom program. For the Government Information Service, I am Jesse Leons. The Department of Finance has developed a citizen's guide to the 2021-2022 budget, which provides a clear, concise and simplified presentation of information on the estimates of revenue and expenditure. This forms part of the government's communication strategy geared at fostering greater accountability and transparency of the operations of government through increased access to information in the public domain. The Department of Finance is mandated 
to provide oversight and management of the preparation of the annual estimates of revenue and expenditure, also known as the National Budget. Permanent Secretary in the Department of Finance, Esther Rigobert, said the department has seen the need for greater public awareness and education on how the department delivers on its mandate. It's the responsibility of government agencies to communicate with the wider public their work program, what they're doing, the initiatives being undertaken, and how that will be of benefit to them. P.S. Rigobert made those remarks in reference to the publication of a Citizen's Guide to the 2021-2022 budget produced by the Department of Finance. She said the guide has simplified the somewhat intimidating over 600-page budget document filled with numbers, figures, and estimates. We found it very useful to um, develop and publish a document that's very easy to read and understand so that the average person, whether it be a student, educator, a nurse, doctor, police officer, a farmer, fisherman, regardless, can go through this document within a short period of time and get an appreciation of what's contained in the government's estimates of revenue and expenditure. The Citizen's Guide, she explained, provides an outline of the budget process, the agencies involved in its preparation, the legal authority, links to supporting documents such as the Governor General and Prime Minister's policy statements, among other pertinent information. It will delineate the expenditures by ministry or department. It would show what the total expenditure is expected to be for this fiscal year and also where the revenues would be derived from, both from tax revenue and grants and other um, loan facilities, as well as bonds and treasury bills. So that is a form of educating the public. And the average solution needs to get a better appreciation of what government's revenues and expenditures um, comprise of, and we hope that this guide would do just that. The Citizen's Guide to the Budget has been published on the Government of St. Lucia's web portal, the Department of Finance's website, as well as on the social media pages of the Government of St. Lucia and the NCPC. For the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, Glenn Simon reporting. Youth Development and Sports Minister Honorable Edmund Estefan continues to emphasize the role of youth in national development and the commitment of government to harness and utilize this quantum of the population for search. In his contribution to the debate on the 2021-2022 Appropriations Bill, he referenced the professionalization of youth work as part of this effort. This unnoticed profession work is particularly significant in the context of COVID-19. And so our youth workers go out there and even virtually they administer youth programs to our young people. And I will leave that there. Youth work is well and alive on this island. And we have about 20 youth workers on island working in the communities to help our distressed youth and so on. And even those who are not distressed to at least guide them to safety and to bring programs to them for their development and for their upliftment. The minister recognized the work of the Youth Service Corps and their contributions to the advancement of communities. He says the program also presents participants with development opportunities. We have volunteers all along the island, and I can give you some of the areas that they work. It's a situation where, together with employers, the government pays some of the salary, the employer pays some, and those persons are engaged in, in, an, in employment. And in a lot of instances, those individuals are retained by those employers. Honorable Estefan encouraged members of youth organizations to exercise initiative and hold their executives to account. Meanwhile, cash prizes were awarded to winners of the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports logo competition. This latest venture of the ministry is part of an overall thrust to enhance its image and increase visibility. Ryan O'Brien from the Information Unit filed this report of a logo competition organized by the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports to enhance its image were presented with their prizes during a ceremony 
held at the ministry's conference room recently. In the last few months, the ministry has embarked on a number of initiatives to increase its functioning and public image. It is the ministry's hope that the logo will create a refreshing new look to help connect with the youth, support and align with the youth of the nation, and give the ministry an image that young people can identify with. Minister responsible for Youth Development and Sports, the Honorable Edmund Estefan, was on hand for the presentation. Whilst we continue to use the coat of arms for all government agencies, we felt it necessary to brand the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports. So against this backdrop, we threw out that challenge that you took, you know, with open arms. And we are told that about 70 individuals on island responded to the challenge. And um, as far as I'm told, well, I should say, say as far as I can see, that it's a beautiful logo. And, and I'm sure the whole of St. Lucia will embrace it. Stuart Cauldron emerged winner of the competition and received the cash prize of $1,000 ec dollars. Second prize went to Neil John, who was presented with $500 ec dollars, while Brandon Scott was in third place and received $250 ec dollars for his submission. From the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, I'm Ryan O'Brien. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. really nice and she told me that mouth rinsing is very important for healthy teeth. How so? Rinsing with water gets rid of food in between your teeth which can protect you from getting cavities. No way! So after I eat or drink anything, it's a good idea to rinse out my mouth with water. Yes! Make sure to spit out the water after rinsing because swallowing will only bring the germs into your body. Remember! Water is an easy and cost-effective way to instantly boost your health and a healthy body to fight many diseases including COVID-19. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Merci autant, Janelle. Monsieur, Madame, département qui est responsable pour l'information en gouvernement de cette loi, ça c'est GIS, à son petit télévision nationale, puis il y a NTN, qui a posé une nouvelle en créole pour cette loi, Primus Hutchinson. Comme ce cas corona qui a augmenté en la terre, et ça c'est pour 8 semaines, il y a des lots. Côté, ils ont découvert plus de 5 millions de neuf en semaine qui passait, particulièrement en pays comme l'Inde, l'Amérique, le Brésil, la Turquie et la France, qui a fait cette liste ouverte hier. En région Corée-Bla, plusieurs pays qui ont gommé pour ménager ces cas nouveaux et qui sont plus féroces parce que ça a été plus féroce parce que ça a été qui existait déjà. Il y en a ces pays là, ça qui aussi ce voisinage en nous en cette liste, c'est Martinique qui enregistre presque 900 cas neuf en semaine qui passe, côté trois différents cas neuf maladies corona à Dayo. En cette liste, le ministère de la Santé a noté que l'année en total de plus de 4500 cas corona qui confirment, côté plus de 4300, j'ai trouvé des raisons. L'année en cas qui critique toujours, 97 cas qui actifs. 
So the city shall register for 13 years more, and the cause of the corona, the minister shall continue to continue to exercise the vaccine tous les jours. Le ministère de Santé, il a déjà apercevé une réduction en ce cas neuf qui est en PIA. Pour moins de monde qui a fait plainte de problèmes d'étouffement à présent, et moins de monde qui a entré en l'hôpital Victoria, et moins de monde qui a visité ces cliniques-là qui payent en divers côtés à PIA. Le ministère de Santé, il a remercié le public de cette ci pour qu'il continue à coopérer et puis pour abattre la mauvaise pandémie. Le ministère de Santé, il a continué pour vérifier la situation ça là ni en région et ici en grand ce pays là et qu'à renforcer ces précautions qui est nécessaire et pour suivre ces recommandations pour essayer de protéger le monde public à cette liste. Le ministère de la Santé a fait public la savoir que nous en risque toujours et que cela a par la place touristique internationale, ça c'est une monde qui a entré à cette liste en façon qui compte le pays là, il est sorti à l'autre pays côté maladie à très haut. Aussi, les gens qui ne peuvent pas suivre les règles pour rester en quarantaine à Caillou. Les étrangers aussi qui ne peuvent pas suivre les règles à ces hôtels-là côté où ils sont restés. Les gens qui ne peuvent pas servir de masque en public, ils ne peuvent pas servir de façon qui doit être là en public. Là. Des grandes activités côté plusieurs gens qui ont comblé un peu de gal au lieu de cette liste. Place business qui ne peut pas suivre le protocole toujours et les gens qui ont voyagé à bord de tout public sans servir masse à la Fédia. Le ministère de la Santé fait comprendre qu'on peut y avoir qu'à faire concupé pour garder si affaire à sa vie est normale encore et qu'à venir encore plus nécessaire pour les autorités prendre toute précaution pour que le pays a resté sans et sauve. Gouvernement Taïwan, encore encore, qui a assisté à cette liste à l'effort pour continuer la bataille contre la maladie de Corona. La tenue en présentation par un check qui était fait dans une cérémonie mardi le 27 avril 2021. Ça, c'est pour financer une initiative pour protéger les business, en particulier avec l'autre monde qui n'est pas capable, qui pas capable pour acheter assez, assez d'articles pour protéger les contre la maladie de Corona. Articles comme masques et sanitizer. Le plan, c'est pour hausser la capacité de business pays et de travailler qui n'a pas gagné un haut salaire. L'initiative là, qui fait possible pour vous faire une façon pour sanitiser et porter des masques à Soufidia. La majorité de ces business là, qui a expérimenté un autre casement parce qu'il n'est pas possible pour vous faire continuellement ni toutes ces articles qui sont nécessaires pour protéger les travailleurs contre la maladie de Corona. Ça aussi qui a affecté les travailleurs qui n'ont pas de ressources pour ni ces articles là à caillou même. Le ministre des Affaires, Commerce, Investissement, Industrie et les consommateurs, ça c'est Honorable Bradley Félix, déclaré que la Chambre de Commerce a fait un appel pour le ministère d'assister à la situation et que c'est pour raison qui fait le projet de venir en réalité. Le ministre Félix a annoncé que le gouvernement de cette ci recevra assistance à presque 1 million de dollars par le gouvernement de Taïwan pour aider ce type de business là, pour faire possible pour savoir battre la maladie de Corona. La présentation a été faite par l'ambassadeur Taïwan à cette ci côté à cette ambassade Taïwan à cette ci côté plus de 5 000 travailleurs en T-Business qui ont reçu assistance là, pendant 3 000 T-Business qui ont ni masque et sanitizer en place de travail. L'ambassadeur des pays Taïwan à cette ci Peter Chen, remercie et complimenté le gouvernement à cette ci et expressement le Premier ministre Honorable Alain Chasney et Honorable Bradley Félix pour effort pour aider ou abattre la maladie de Corona en parmi les business à cette ci Si vous avez le ministre des Affaires et du Commerce, Sophia Henry, vous remercie tout ce qui fait une chose de possible, et en particulier le ministère des Affaires et du Développement économique. Il dit que ce type de business-là, quand vous recevez plusieurs mille masques qui sont capables pour vous servir plusieurs fois, avec l'autre article de protection contre le Corona, pour ni travailler avec un caillou même. Le directeur exécutif pour la Chambre de commerce, c'est le Brian Louisry, déclaré que le travail est pour que tout le business ni capacité et tout article qui est nécessaire pour conduire le travail effectivement et comme doit être. L'initiative là aussi a coûté 935 800 dollars. Le ministère des Affaires, Travaux et Construction veut faire tout chauffer l'auto, savent. La Cagnon Mandev Nouveau des Affaires Trafic a sous façade chimé en cette section en Paris Corinth pour faciliter le travail au bâtiment Walmart Aussi, tout le nouveau 
et qui ont placement pour l'autre passager, amassé passager. Commencé depuis jeudi le 29 avril 2021, chemin Corinth pour Boutli et puis grand chemin Castri pour Gozeli pour MS Kawash et Garage, qui est resté fermé pour tout l'autre passager depuis 10h bon matin pour jusqu'à 5h après-midi tous les jours. La situation ça là, a continué pour une semaine de mon temps ce travail ça là, travail la cafette. Le chauffeur de l'auto qui a entré et sorti Corinth, qui est pour servir le chemin concrète qui est en Windward Islands Gases. Il a encouragé le chauffeur de l'auto pour servir l'autre route qui est plus facile aussi. Il a aussi un trafic avec l'autre signe et aussi les personnes qui engagent un projet qui est présent pour assister. Le ministère des Affaires, Construction et Travaux qui a pris une grande apologie pour pièce de façon ça peut affecter le public. Là et qu'on remercie tout le président et qu'on fait l'auto pour qu'on continue à coopérer et puis on. Avant de finir, un petit annoncement à ce côté de la vaccine. Commencé, ça c'est jeudi, le 29, le service de la vaccine qui est en Parish Hall, ça c'est quand il apparaît à Deviso, il y a aussi quand il est en Darren Summer in Cricket Grounds, ça c'est un beau séjour. Et que vendredi le 30 avril, le service de la vaccine qui est en Philip Marsley Grounds à Vieux-Fort, Darren Sammy, Cricket Grounds, uh, will see you sports complex in La Vigie, that's a grounds um, sport La Vigie, uh, multiple center Barbono, uh, wellness center La uh, fisheries complex La Chouazé, and multiple center uh, Miku, and uh, wellness center La uh, Jack Mel. And so, we will see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching and invitation. Pour je ne puis moins considérer qu'on savait la vie, je n'ai pas cette autre nouvelle à quoi il a présent. Mon cavier est présent au Chanel. Merci à Pil Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 p.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Girlfriend Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.